Hello, friends and family, and thank you for tuning in to the Doug and Trussell Family Hour. I'd like to say a big hello to all of you who are about to get married. Congratulations, you should be excited. I picture you now sitting in your room, nervously looking at your wedding dress. You look great. Don't worry, you're beautiful. This is your special day. And you, sir, pacing around there in your pre-wedding room. Don't worry. The ring's in your pocket. And to all you wedding priests going to say the magic words that eternally bind two lovers together forever, may you channel some super powerful astral deity that actually makes the marriage work instead of collapse in flames because the two people who married each other were fucking liars who tricked each other into thinking there was something they weren't. And once the rings come on, the masks come off and they realize that they are both human praying mantises in a struggle to see who can bite off the other one's head first. But for all of you true lovers, worshipers of the divine intelligence of the universe, who aren't trapped in crappy thought patterns, congratulations on finding someone real. Please have babies with that sweet, sweet darling. Because the world needs babies raised by lovers instead of babies raised by lizards. And to all of you on a trampoline right now, please be careful. Do you know that one of the number one causes of accidents in the United States among drunk children is trampoline accidents? The kids get in their parents' liquor cabinet, they have a couple of snorts of whiskey, and then go jump on the trampoline jump too hard, fly off the trampoline, go over the fence and land in the neighbor's yard and get devoured by Rottweilers. This happens all the time. Every day across the country, at least five children spring off the trampoline into a nest of hornets, into a fire pit, into a, a spike. It's, these trampolines are deadly and they should be banned. At least banned from people who keep spikes or bees in their yard. God, I had some good times on the trampoline. Those were the days. Jumping up and down, staring off at the Georgia Marsh, completely unaware of the fact that my parents' marriage was collapsing, and completely unaware of the fact that the fact that their marriage fell apart was going to make my life much better than it would have been otherwise. For all of you who've been through, whose parents have been divorced, do you ever think about what would have happened if they hadn't broken up? And you've been stuck living with two miserable, cowardly people while you were growing up? God, Jesus fucking Christ. Because it's not like when parents are like, we're going to stay together until Jack goes to college. Ugh, that's the worst. That's so bad. I hate that martyred fucking parent thing. Don't do that, parents. Don't do the martyred thing. I'm giving my life for my little girl. That's not love. That's indulgence. You you disgusting, selfish son of a gun. I'm suffering for my baby. Don't suffer for your baby. Be happy for your kids. The best thing you do do for your kids is be happy. That's what they see. Kids know it if you're fucking playing the whole martyr game, shuffling around the house like you're about to walk in front of Pontius Pilate, wearing a grim face that only belongs on an actor in reenacting the passion of the Christ. What's wrong with you? Cheer up. Chip up. Chip up, parents. Come on. You got a sweet little baby. There's oxygen in the air. You've got... Hands and feet. A mouth. Skin. You can experience reality. Are you really going to let yourself be miserable? You victim. Come on. Flip the, flip the script. Figure something great out. You got sweet little kids. Tell them a fun story. That's fun. Tell your kids a fucking awesome ghost story. Freak them out. Instead of being a goddamn ghost story, tell your kids a ghost story. And to all you Italian cruise ship captains, pay attention. And to all of you 
who at this very moment are in nuclear submarines deep under the sea, I salute you. Thank you for spying on the fish. Well, today's, oh, before I forget, everyone, my God, what an incredible event is coming up this Saturday that I'm going to, um, and that I feel uh, compelled to uh, do an advertisement for, because I actually did a podcast with Julia Vickerman, who is an amazing uh, local Los Angeles artist. She is doing one of the coolest art exhibits, which is coming up this Saturday at Meltdown Comics, um, which is a Kristen Stewart art exhibit. Now, if you don't know, as I actually didn't, Kristen Stewart is that kind of emotionless weirdo in the Twilight series. And Vickerman, being a brilliant artist, has assembled a legion of local artists and comedians to create visual interpretations of Kristen Stewart. It's happening this Saturday. April 7th. I'm going to be there. You got to go there. Meltdown Comics. There's going to be a link to it on my website. Does this podcast give you more or less pleasure than a cup of coffee at Starbucks? If it gives you more pleasure, why not throw three bolts of green lightning into the vortex that this show is? And if you don't want to donate, totally cool. I love you. It doesn't matter. It's certainly not necessary. You could just go to my forum at DuncanTrussell.com. Join the DuncanTrussell.com family forum and participate there. Those people there are super smart and we're starting a new book so you can jump right into the book club. We're starting Watership Down. So join the forum. And if you do, you, oh, I can hear you. You think I can't hear you? I hear you thinking this right now. How do I decorate my walls? How do I decorate the walls of my family morgue with pictures related to the Duncan Trussell Family Hour? Simple. Go to DuncanTrussell.com, go to the shop, and buy one of my limited edition Duncan Trussell Family Hour Chaos Posters, where I'm getting possessed by the spirit of my demonic puppet, Lil Hobo. I'm only making 666 of these, and I'm selling them for $33.33 each, and that includes shipping and handling. And they're giant. And to those of you who have donated and continue to donate, namaste. I love you more. Express. May our souls intertwine like snakes coiling together in the primordial darkness of eternal time. We, we are, are one mind. We, we are, are one spirit. spirit. Now, before we get to my brilliant guest, please enjoy a new segment on the Duncan Trussell Family Hour. What do you do? What do you do? I'm a seller of dirty socks, old shoes. I don't sell underwear anymore because those people are kind of cheap. People who buy underwear are cheap? Yes. People who have foot fetishes, they just, they're willing to fork out the cash. And I don't know. It's just, I, I, I don't feel like, I feel like um, selling socks, they're not really worth as much. But um, selling underwear, like you have to send pictures of like your ass and like, you doing things with the underwear and so I feel like it should be worth more it's like if I'm gonna do take all these like pictures of me doing weird shit with my underwear I want to get like at least like 200 bucks and nobody's gonna spend that much no but I don't huh go ahead sorry I don't care about sending pictures of my feet because they're just like fucking feet so what what's the going price for a pair of underwear a pair of underwear some people, I don't understand why, because, like, when you put up the ad on this website that I use called eBand, um, you have to pay $5 to at least have your picture next to the listing, which will definitely help you sell. And some people, they sell their underwear for $15. I just feel like that's a lot of trouble to go through for $10, plus you have to ship the item and buy, like, a little bubble envelope to send it in. How many now, items do you sell a week? About three. Three pairs of socks. Well, sometimes it's um, a pair of shoes and a couple pairs of socks. Or maybe, like, pictures or videos of my feet putting on socks or shoes. Or, like, sometimes they want you to, like, spread your toes, which is really weird. But, I mean, I guess, so you got to do what you got to do. Well, I mean, yeah, we're just coming out of a recession. It's not like... Yeah. 
It's not it's it's not like the old days of selling socks when you could just send a pair of socks to a pervert and he'd be happy. Yeah. Like when my mother used to sell socks, she didn't have to spread her toes. She just bagged them up and sent them to New Jersey and got a nice check in the mail. Sometimes it helps to write like a little note or to put stickers on the baggie because then it seems more charming. You put sticker you write a little note? Yeah, I have, like, this lo- these little, like, they kind of look like children's stationery because it kind of gives it, like, a Lolita um, effect. And I just write, thank you, in this, like, terrible cursive, and sometimes I misspell things on purpose. I, like, it has to kind of smell like corn chips if you want to sell them, or else the people are going to be upset. And what, what happens then if somebody, have you ever gotten a complaint letter that the socks didn't smell bad enough? <laughs> no, not yet. I just started this, um this year. So this is a fledgling business. This is like one of the new businesses that is a result of Obama getting the nation back on its feet. No. Well, I think there's always just internet perverts who are going to find ways to get girls dirty socks. And now with PayPal, it makes it a lot easier. When you wash your feet, do you feel like you're kind of adding hours of work to, to what you have to do? <laughs> do you feel weird washing your feet these days? I mean, they get washed when they're in the shower. I don't, like, sit there and scrub them all day. They're not, like, terrible. You can't scrub them. I mean, that's, you can't. That's, like, throwing away inventory. Uh, I, I can see how you sell a lot of socks. Here's my question, and it's an unethical thing. But couldn't you just get a bunch of your guy friends to wear girls' socks around for a couple of hours and have a nice, like, bin filled with stinky socks so that you could set, have more output? But then they would want the money. <laughs> Well, those aren't real friends. Yeah, but they're jealous because, like, whenever I talk about it, they're like, oh, I feel like I'm not in on a scam. I wish that girls had foot fetishes and wanted to buy my dirty socks. Well, your your guy friends are idiots because all they have to do is put up a picture of a pretty girl and say they're girl socks. I told, I told them that. I told them that I would wear the socks for the picture and then they can wear them and make them stink. And what did they say? Well, they don't want to pay me a cut. <laughs> They don't want to pay you anything. No. They were like, that, does, that doesn't even take much time for you. All you have to do is put on a pair of socks and then take them off. It's like, I'm helping you. I'm modeling the socks for you. Well, here's the, here's the, good, here's the cool thing. Because I'm sure this is like sock fraud. It's probably a big <laughs> problem in your business. Yes. Because <laughs> how are you going to compete with somebody who's running a full-scale sock vending operation and they've just got a bunch of dudes stomping around in the back in lady socks and then they're selling those well i mean you just have to get some clients who are kind of devotees and then they just keep asking for your socks in particular like it's like they have a relationship with your foot scent they don't want to go to anybody else so they get addicted to the smell of your foot yes and they know. So, in other words, if you sent them, like, a pair they of... They would know. <laughs> they'd know right away, though, this is bullshit. This is not your foot. This is not the smell of your, my darling <laughs> baby doll Spank's feet. Yes, they would know because they have my other socks that they can compare them to. I'm sure, like, that they lose scent, and that's why they keep trying to get more socks for me because it probably fades away. How many clients would you say that you have? Four. Well, we got to get you more clients. That's, yes. <laughs> that's what this is for. You need more people. I only have so many feet. So I want you to tell me, what are your goals in the next three months for your sock business? Um, I guess just start charging more. So you want to up the price of your socks? Yes. Oh, I also have this idea for toe jam where I put, like, jelly on my feet and then scrape it back and put it into, like, the jar that it came out of and then maybe do cute little labels. That's a see, there you go. I also thought about expanding into the selling of urine. Is that a big business out there? People, they just buy, like, strangers pee on the internet and drink it. Um, see, now that is, that's a, uh... I think you could get more. You just keep drinking water, and then you just produce more product. Yeah, there you go. You're like a a, a, a milk cow, but for <laughs> piss. Yes, and then um, I wanted to 
kind of like play off of the fact that I live in Tennessee and then put them in mason jars and then call them ten a pee. How do you send pee in the mail? Isn't that, can you get in trouble for that? It's illegal, but I mean, no one's going to open your mail. You just have to, just don't be shady when you're sending it. And I mean, you have to package it really tightly so it doesn't spill. Yeah, don't be shady when you're sending your, <laughs> your urine to, to perverts across America. <laughs> you got to be careful. That's not, well, because well, inevitably somebody's going to like accidentally drop it. Uh-huh. In the mail, in, in the post office, then you're going to get pee all over everybody's mail. Say that <laughs> the lemonade spoiled. You're planning what you could do if things go wrong. You have an idea now for ways to expand your business. You, you want to start selling pee, and <laughs> you want to start sell, selling jelly that you put on your feet and put back into the jar. So that's, Yeah, people will pay more for that because it's edible. It's amazing talking to you. I think you've really shined a, a light on this. I feel like we barely, actually, to be honest, I feel like we barely scratched the surface of the sock vending underworld. But I'm running out of time for this segment. Do a commercial for the, my listeners. Tell them where they can get a pair of your socks. Okay. Let's hear it. Hi, my name is Baby Doll Spank, and I've been wearing these socks for three days. And you could buy my socks. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so bad at this. You got to get that. Listen, you got to take this seriously. You want to be the tr- Trump of socks. Action. Yes. Okay. Hi, my name is Baby Doll Spank. And I've been wearing these socks for three days. And they can be yours for $50. You could email me <laughs> at babydollspank at yahoo.com. Pretty good. <laughs> Pretty good. You got to try to... Let's do it one more time. Uh, Sound a lit slightly. Be in character. Be in character. Action. Hi, my name is Baby Doll Spank, and I've been wearing these socks for three days. You could have them for $50 if you email me at babydollspank at yahoo.com. I could also sell underwear, toe jam, and urine. Well, there you go, everybody. That's Baby Doll Spank. Why not buy some of her urine or toe jam or socks or underwear? If you, you could, you know what? If you don't want to smell, you can wear them. So, if they fit. So this, you so, can also buy my garbage. How much for your garbage? Um, well, it's kind of a grab bag. Um, it's a mystery, so you don't know what may be in there. But probably like forty dollars a bag. What can we, What are some possibilities of what we can find in your garbage? Used Q-tips, old makeup, um, snot rags, maybe like a tampon. Well, there you go, forty bucks, and that could be all yours. That's a great deal. Um, okay, baby doll spank. Thank you so much for Thank hearing you. on the Duncan Trussell Family Hour. Definitely going to have you back. I In, in a few months, I want to hear that your business has expanded. Yes. And um, I want to hear that you've gotten more than four clients um, <laughs> and, 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 are, and, and are building your sock empire. Today's guest is a brilliant, dark comedian, a really good friend of mine, an awesome writer, and uh, somebody I used to do a, a show with in Echo Park in a record store. Um, the Chief Cornfoot Comedy Hour. We used to, um, it was a really great show. We were going to buy corn chowder for everyone before the show, but then we ended up realizing that that was incredibly stupid and just bought a keg of beer. But I have a lot of wonderful memories with this sweet man. So everyone, please send your telepathic love rays deep into the heart chakra of my friend, the hilarious comedian, Matt Dwyer.
Nam yo ho renge kyo 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 nam um, Matt Dwyer, God Duncan damn, Trussell, welcome, welcome, it's great welcome. to be here. Yeah, you, um, God, that chanting sounded really cool, and it's so funny how uh, hypnotic that chant is. I we could have just done that for the whole podcast. I'm thinking about doing an hour chanting podcast eventually. I, I am for thinking, real. Yeah, just an hour of chanting, so people who are freaking out on mushrooms can have something to listen to and kind of come down a little bit because it That's helps. It's a good idea. I usually just you know put on some fish if I'm freaking out on mushrooms. Well, I and then I freak out more. What, do you, what kind? Tilapia? Yeah, I put on some tilapia. Or carp. You know, I'm from a <laughs> ghetto of outside of Chicago. And you have to be careful because there's a vein in carp. If you eat it, you could kill yourself. Oh, you mean cook it. See, I, when I'm having a bad mushroom trip, I'll get a big swordfish and cut it open and, and, and actually put it on. There's nothing better than a knife and some blood when you're peeking. I love it. If, I'm, or if you're freaking out on mushrooms and you want to not freak out... For call your local grocery store, get a, order some fish with the guts. And just, yeah. Cut, I, that, cut it open and stick your face right in that fucking fish crack and just take a good snort of guts. <laughs> so you get fish guts in your nose and, it, <laughs> and you will feel so much better. And then walk into a daycare center. Oh, there's nothing... That will make that bad trip get better than walking naked then, into a daycare center covered in fish guts. Because children are so innocent and sweet, and it rubs off on you. You'll just sense yeah. this innocence yes. and openness to life. Yes, on the, in those kids' eyes. Well, they. I mean, they're they they. I I can remember when I was in daycare, and a man walked in naked, covered in fish guts, and it was probably the happiest day of my life. Yeah, I it did happen several times for me, and it's just like it's any time I'm just. Like I'm having trouble sleeping, I just go back to that space yes. of the man with the fish guts, and I just—it uh, oh, it just it puts me right out. What a great space! It's a great safe place. What a great space! Flying through space with a man covered in fish guts. It's um. How does that nursery rhyme go? The one about the man who takes you into space who's covered in fish guts. If you're a bad kid, how does it go again? <laughs> No, it goes, it goes, uh, no more of your butts, the man with fish guts. How, I can't remember, how does it go? He'll take you to space and throw you in the ruts. <laughs> Hard to think that I, you know, did improv for so many years, and that's, that's now what I'm capable of delivering. <laughs> little Jack, little Jack Smith lied too much. He's taken away by the man with fish guts. <laughs> How did it go? Yeah, it was, and then the little Susie Lee didn't hold her pee, and now the man with the fish guts is taking her up the tree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it goes, it goes. <laughs> um, uh, little Bill Smith, he killed his sis. Now the man with fish guts is making him drink piss. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I love that poem. Oh, my boy. grandmother would um, come in. I would. My grandmother had um, some kind of foot condition that, uh, made, and I had to rub salt in her pussy at night to help her oh, feet. Oh yeah, yeah. So I would salt gra- Granny's um, vagina, and uh, as I was rubbing salt into her pussy, she'd say those poems, the fish gut poems. Well, that's why the Morton's uh, Salt Girl holds an umbrella. Are you fucking kidding it's me? It's really because it looks. If you look closely enough, it's two labias she's holding. Holy it's like a little labia and shit. yeah. Like you're you get totally squint right. your eyes at the Morton's Salt Girl, and it you'll just see a. And she actually, if you squint your eyes, she becomes the clitoris. Oh my god, you're totally right. Yeah. I totally. <laughs> yeah. God damn, you're right. Yeah, no, I'm. That's uh, a lot of those companies. Did a lot of tricks like that, you know. That's it's, it's uh, you know subliminal advertising. Yep, that's amazing. You, now, this is a, something that I remember being fixated on with that when I was a kid. Is this idea that like advertising executives actually 
try to trick you by putting like because remember the like, like they'd put dicks in the in the dicks in the ice cubes. Yeah, I remember. And then the, the, there was a guy with a boner in the uh, camel on the camel cigarettes. Guy with a, like standing. It's kind of like a guy standing with his hands on his hips and he and his and he's got a boner. Yeah, yeah, no, because I used to jerk off to the camel all the time because there's a because I liked a guy with a boner. There, I said it. I jerked off to men with boners as a kid. What's I'm wrong with totally, that? I don't know. What are you, a homophobe? You can't jerk off to a guy with a boner? <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, that, in a weird way. Open that, your mind, bro. Yeah, you're right. I'm going to open my mind. It's just a cartoon anyway, on a camel. Cartoon to you. Maybe I was really jerking off to the camel. I mean, it's. I think it's the whole, it's, as, as uh, Fritz Perls would say, it's the gestalt. You're, you're jerking off to the whole thing. It's not just the yeah, that's a good guy point. With the, standing with his hands on his love hand. And a pyramid. Yeah. There's a pyramid in the background. We're I'm door. jerking off to Egypt. What a, that's, and that is every day in Egypt. A man, it's, a, it's the same thing they say. The guy who brings roses to Edgar Allan Poe's grave. When he's not doing that, he goes to Egypt and stands in front of the pyramid with his hands on his love handles and a semi-erect penis I in must, a camel. I'm going to start doing this. Every year at, on, uh, on uh, Valentino's birthday, the woman in red brings yeah. the flowers. I'm going to start showing up in a football outfit, and I'm going to tackle her. so she. C- I'll never let her get to the gravesite again. Yeah, that's a good idea. Break her <laughs> fucking legs, man. Every thing. year I'm going to stop her. We don't need these grave freaks bringing flowers down to the... F- what is that, man? I, like, what the fuck? That's somebody who's trying to get tourists to a cemetery. <laughs> Just like, he dresses up like a... You know the guy, the mysterious Edgar Allan Poe brings... I've never both. heard that, actually. Oh, you've never heard that? No. I, oh, yeah. A guy used to come out there with a bottle of cognac and a red, single red rose, and he'd lay it on the grave. And then people would gather around to watch, and it was like a, or try to catch him. And they then probably he, paid the guy, he right? He stopped showing up. He died. Yeah, he probably... Or maybe one of my people tackled him. Yeah, one of your fucking... The, <laughs> grave tacklers! It could be a show where just like, <laughs> where, where guys just tackle famous grave uh, visitors... I like you know when I was in um, Paris. I uh-huh. oh, did you go to Jim Morrison's gravesite? Mm, indeed, I did. There was a line of. Did eight. you really? Yeah. Wait, there was a line of how many? There was a line of of like there was a line of like fifty Asian tourists going in front of it, and two depressed goth girls. It was really funny, man. Somebody put a harmonica on his grave, but it, but but He's, I hate him. I mean, I just like. He, I just never. I'm the Lizard King. I always thought it was funny that in the Doors movie, his last line before he goes and dies, the yes. great American poet's last words are, what? "Let's go get a taco." <laughs> that's pretty funny. <laughs> May, that, I know, but it's, that's a good thing to put in there. Are, are those notoriously his last words? I don't know, but it is in the movie, and it's just it's not. Uh... This is a nerve wracking thing for me, man, and I think this is, has been brought up from time to time, but the. Whenever anybody dies a violent death, inevitably their last tweet pops up on some news show. Really? Yeah. It's like the new wear clean underwear is like worrying about what you tweet. Oh, like they show your last tweet? Like, or yeah. I thought you meant randomly. Like if I got hit by a car when I leave here, somebody's going to just, you know. Whatever your know. last tweet is, if like something happens and a saw flies out of a construction site and severs the top of your head and it makes national news, like to make national news, it can't just be a random fucking thing. Right. You can't just have a heart attack. You got to get stung by bees and then have All your my, face my tweets up. are uh, like about, you know, sexual dysfunction. <laughs> well, you're going to, that's what will be on CNN. Here was his last tweet. And it's <laughs> whatever your tweet is. I can't get it up. Uh, like yeah, I had a tweet like yeah, that's what would be my last tweet would be uh, that uh, I watched a puppy bowl with my dog and point to the television and say that could have been you if you weren't such a faggot. Oh my god! <laughs> See, that's how I treat my dog like my son because I'm not going to have kids. How do you know? I'm pretty sure my my dick's broke. Get out of here! My balls you are broke. Got a fine dick. I mean, it works, but I've had a lot of unprotected sex with women. Oh, it got sealed by God. I think God, I don't know. I mean, because gir- I dated a girl for a year and a half. We lived together, fucked all the time. Yes. Months after we broke up, the dude, she, the next dude she was seeing, she got like pregnant like instantly. The dude got fucking pregnant. The dude got pregnant. That's so fucked up. Man. You got so lucky. I know. <laughs> oh, man, you could have gotten a fucking pregnant. I had, a, I, had a, I had a one of those gallstones once. I couldn't imagine a baby. This is something, man, that guys never ever really think about which is imagine 
if you really want to understand what it means when a woman decides to let you fuck her, imagine what how things would be different if when guys fuck girls, there was a chance that you could fucking get pregnant and in like a certain amount of time, you're going to have to shoot something so huge out of your asshole <laughs> that it's going to rip you in half and it's going to cost you so much fucking money. Think about that. That's crazy. Like that's the, it's so strange that this is a, this is a, this is when a woman is having sex that, that, that's something she has to think about. No, maybe that's, I'll blame that for why I can't get them to orgasm. They're so preoccupied with me having their baby. They're thinking about that little Dwyer swelling up in their in their being linked to stomach. me for life. Yeah, sleeping with me has already been a bad choice. Being stuck with me for a lifetime. Yeah, you're out of your mind. You're a handsome. For those of you who look at the go on Duncantrussell dot com and look at a picture of Matt Dwyer. This is one of the funniest, most handsome uh, men that I know, and he's doing what we call in the comedy business. <laughs> Self-deprecating <laughs> humor right now. He's, True. He's also a really good writer. Are you kidding? Girls would love to have your sweet, fat baby popping out of their pussy. If any of you people see my picture and want me to put a baby inside you, I will. Uh, guys, take a look at the picture. If you would like to have this man's sweet, fat baby spraying out of your beautiful vagina my new goal five babies by the end of this year there you go that's from better. this podcast only see you got to be careful man if you keep talking like that you're not gonna have a child if you keep doing this thing where i don't know if i'm gonna have a baby you're not gonna have a baby i want to i want to babies make us whole uh, yeah man they're, they're and i want to feel like i want to i want to be a part of a, a family it's important to me you do i want a wife don't i want, you want a, a beautiful, family i want a, i do don't i want, you a, want family. a family i think there's nothing better than you know? Are you being sarcastic? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why wouldn't you want a family? Some warm, sweet darling to, to hold in, in the dark of the night and a darling child that you can go oh. and da dandle and dondle on your knee and rub it, roll, a, roll a blanket around it and yeah. grease its head with Crisco and put a candle at the top of its head that does and bury it in the sand and then uh, surround it with like a spiral of honey and then going into its mouth so that the ants follow the spiral down into its mouth and devour his innards and he collapses down into the earth and all that's left is that beautiful candle sticking out of the grass. Wouldn't you like that? I would. Yeah. You do want a family. I do want a family. <laughs> Thanks for turning me around on that. Yeah. yeah. You do want a family. But in all seriousness, wouldn't you like, I mean, do you really, you don't, because I, I think this is something that like when I was younger, I was like, fuck that, man. I don't ever want a family. I want See, a I'm the, I'm the other. You really want kids? Oh, well, it's not like I don't want kids. It's, I think if I, I don't know. I don't. I think it'd be, I think if you find the right person, then why wouldn't you want to have a sweet little dandelion tot? A sweet little darling to pick out clothes for and then sandpaper its nose down? Yeah, that sounds pretty great. I'd like to, you know, I'd like to just have a gaggle of truckers come over when my, she's like, my daughter first hits puberty. Yeah. And just like 50 bucks each, they fucking just pass her around for like a half hour. Yep. Half hour each. I don't want to limit it. Well, I mean, you're a businessman. Yeah. That's like the old classic kind of like, that's like the classic Sears kind of old school 60s, 50s American business model where you're like, I want my customers to be satisfied and the profit yeah. and that and it's worth the profit margin shriek, shrinking or shrieking for that matter. But I, I, I think that I I don't know. I I really do, man. I really think that I I'm not closing myself off to the idea. It's not like I go around every day thinking, My God, I've got to marry me a woman and have a family and a child, but I, I think that there's some warmth to be had from it. And most people I know who are married wait a minute. One person I know, <laughs> who's, one I know, person I know is married is quite happy. I know a couple. I think most. I don't know, man. Anytime I see a family travel, anytime I'm on the road and I see a family traveling, inevitably one of the two, usually the husband, look like they want to fucking murder everybody. Yes, I've seen that. The ashen face, the kind of like frozen face, and the still, still kind of weird look. And yeah, I know what you mean, man. But I think a lot of people don't. 
question like i think a lot of people just get married have kids you know like they like you have to go to college like oh well get college and then i can mean to get married yeah i don't think you know so i think most people have kids when they're not prepared to do it on it's like yeah i don't think right at this point in my life i'm like there's no like if i got somebody pregnant yes ladies out there yes i would like i would be in a fucking state of panic because i'm like i'm not emotionally right. ready i got a dog i really love my dog yep and I, that's uh and that's uh but I don't know if I'm ready for the next step. You got to take like the Crowleyan steps towards it. You know, summon the woman, summon the woman in a ritual and then impregnate the woman, not just because you love her, because you want her to spawn the child of the new Aeon. You want her to give birth to a being that is going to help uh, evolve the species. That's why you should have a child. See, yeah, I keep looking at it all the wrong way. You're looking at it the wrong looking way. At it the wrong go way. to college and fucking find some dipshit at a local goddamn laundromat and get your fucking seed in her. And See, make I was a- thinking about going back to college at my age and and seeing if I could meet a nice That's young wife. That's a great <laughs> idea. There you, you could, be, dude. If you were a fucking professor. You would be the fucking professor. You would just fuck, and f- you would fuck your way through a that's campus. That's how I met. I've, uh, I, I was a teacher at a college for a while. I've, I, I've, that's, I did get some pussy. It would be like a dick tornado spinning through campus. I can't imagine what would happen to that campus. I think it'd be great. You've got to keep you off campuses. You would. <laughs> that's. I, I don't go to colleges. But every time I play colleges, I'm always like fucking yeah, like I'm gonna, and then nothing ever happens. Did you ever hear the story of that raping comic? Ah, uh, vaguely. His his signature is at the Hermosa Beach at the Hermosa Beach Comedy Magic Club. They have the, all these like the classic signatures all over the wall, like at the comedy store. It's some they kind of take his off. No, it's still there. It's on a brick. Who did it's he still rape? There. He would. <clears throat> it's something that I always have thought would be the most. It awesome would be the movie. best if you're a serial rapist because you're like you're just you're fucking out of there. You know how they caught him? How they noticed that the rapes ha- happened to exactly follow his tour, so he would tour colleges. When he was done doing stand-up, he would f- rape co-eds. Oh, he wouldn't like date rape. He would go out no, and no, rape. No, no, he raped. Oh, he was he was like a fucking rapist, like in the classic sense of the word. He would go into their whatever he would do. He'd go in their dorm room. Supposedly, he would like. Um, I guess he was. I don't know. He must have disguised himself because they would have been like, "That's the guy." I was just laughing at his jokes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst. Why are you raping or me? Even worse. What if you didn't think he was funny? You go see a bad comedy show and you're getting ready for bed and the next thing you know, the comics climb through the window and is raping you. It's like he just raped your ears and now he's finishing off the job. But he, he, um, so what happened is he, he caught wind that he was being pursued or that the FBI had figured out his game. And so he was supposed to be performing on a cruise ship and he raced to the cruise ship, got on the cruise ship thinking somehow that the cruise ship, once it disembarked from the port and made it into international waters, he would be safe. So he gets on the cruise ship because it was going to, to Barbados or something. And he was just going to leave the country for good. He gets on the cruise ship and the captain's like, um, the FBI is coming to get you. So uh, you can't leave until you're arrested. Wow. And he was going to perform on that cruise ship and he got arrested. I can't remember his name. I'll post it on the comment section of this. Under uh, yeah, I know somebody who got roofied on a cruise ship, which is if you kind of think of it, it's a kind of evil genius because it's like, and then the next day, fucking you're they, you know, you don't remember who it is, and then you don't know who. So your friend actually got like raped. She didn't get no. She didn't. She luckily got, uh, but she like pieced it together, and her friends pieced it together. She because they were doing uh, some of her friends were doing a show, but it's like that's kind of like. Ugh pure evil genius because it's like then it's like you're on international waters Ugh. and then uh, I, there seems like there's got to be a loophole though if you rape somebody on a on a you know princess cruise you know what i hope that law never gets named after me <laughs> <laughs> it already is the boat's named after you princess you know what i never want a law named after me that's that's something i never want i, you, I never want to i'm you glad have you a- just uh you just reminded me of it i i've lost i Deleted my file with all my jokes on it, so now I'm trying yeah. to piece them back. Was that one of your jokes? No, no, I had a joke. It was that I, I always knew I'd see my name in lights. I just didn't know it would be an Amber Alert. <laughs> uh, amber Alerts, dude! I, I can't believe there's such predatory humans on the planet. It's such the. This is the thing I've been realizing is like, um, the reason everyone's so paranoid and freaked out right now is because. They think the news is an accurate reflection of reality, but the shit that lands on the news is only the most abnormal 
crimes make it on the news. The most abnormal things out of the, what is it, seven billion, six billion people on the planet? Seven billion. Seven billion people on the planet. Every day, there's like three, three of us. Out of that many billions of people, there's three of us who do something stupid. Three. That's it. Three. But those are the ones who make it on the news. And you see that and you begin to assume that everyone in society is fucked up. Because the second thing that you notice when you're on the news is these fucking painted trollops who are now delivering the news. You know, the new thing on Fox is to get these kind of like... Uh, it's like co-course. It's like after you get done like of, with a lifetime of stripping and you're entering into your middle age, the next step is to become a Fox <laughs> News correspondent. And so you go on there and you like... So you see these kind of like vapid, made up, weird, angry, um, demonic types of people delivering the, the this information that and so then you begin to think oh the, the people delivering the inf- the messengers must reflect the norm that's a, what a normal person's like because they're the ones giving the news and you hear what they're saying and you think oh that reflects the norm everyone's crazy and killing each other but nothing about it's normal it's a fucking harlot talking about very rare forms of death there's nothing in that that's like normal and so then people like get really paranoid when they're walking around all day. Oh, you know, that reminds me that uh, it's a similar thing. I, you see that uh, hot coffee documentary? No. It's about, you know, remember like 10, 15 years ago, whenever the woman spilled hot coffee on herself and she sued McDonald's and it became a big thing where people are like, Ooh, what are you suing? Mc-? Uh, yes, yes. yes. I saw, they, they, somebody did a documentary about it cool. and they show the, the burns. They're fucking, the coffee was like 108 degrees. It's too fucking hot. I mean, her whole, it's, Fucking gruesome, but it was. Then there was all these like. Did people. she win? She did win, but then the citizens, supposed citizen groups, which were actually corporately backed. Yes, always. So, so uh, to turn it around and made it look like, oh, what are you soon for getting spilled? Like, put a lid on it's it. Fucking hot, you stupid. Oh. Yeah, but it was like it was abnormally hot. It was yeah. like. I forget what coffee should be, but it was like over 100 degrees, and it was like it spilled on her. Listen, if your coffee's so fucking hot that it's going to burn your fucking, like, badly burn your leg, how are you going to drink it? They heated the coffee up too much. It was like boiling. They poured boiling water into a cup and gave it to her. That's what happened. She was a sweet, old, innocent lady. How'd her legs look? But pretty good for, like, she was like 80. They were pretty tight. I mean, outside of the burns, which I don't have a problem with. Nothing like fresh burns when you're humping a senior. <laughs> <laughs> this is what uh, the other thing like that irks me is I saw somebody posted on Facebook the other day. You never see you see the picture of the the marine guy in his wedding photo and he's like he's severely severely burned. Yes, I've seen it. And then his bride looks terrified. Yes. Well, he, somebody's reused that photo and they're like like and repost this if to show that show your support. It's just like the most manip I'm like so yeah. like I, I, I had to fight myself not writing like, oh, this is – like I wanted to say something. Well, you should. Because it's manipulative. It's like, first of all, this is manipulative. And it's like yeah. – it's also hilarious. Look at him. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like you fucking – like that fucking picture has been used in a lot of different ways. And I've even, seen it for like 10 years now, it seems. It's yeah. been out there for a while. Well, it's yeah. It's like it's been used as anti-war picture. It's been used as like – all kinds of different fucking ways without it's probably just a bad picture. I mean, by the way, like it's, it's just like they probably caught a bad moment. Like there's probably a good one where she's not like looking oh, yeah. terrified. She's obviously loves the guy. She lives with him. It's not suddenly they went to their fucking wedding night and she noticed that his face had been seared off. I don't know. You'd feel pretty I mean, you'd be pretty hard. If you were engaged to somebody and they went off to war and got crispy and came back, you'd feel pretty you couldn't be like, Hey, uh, I think maybe it's uh, we should start seeing other people. <laughs> Who, when you say you, who do you mean? You, Duncan Trussell. Fuck that. If I'm, like, if first of all. I guess love. Yeah, if you love somebody, you don't care if their fucking face got crisped. You got to deal with it. I'll tell you this, man. It's far worse to fucking um, be with someone whose face doesn't get crisped, but then you realize that their heart looks like that. (laughs) (laughs) That's far worse. That's true. And that's far more fucking common. Because, like, you, you end up with, like, you can, from time to time, people will end up with people, and then so, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, shit, that's what's, oh, shit, you're not, oh, my God, you're a fucking Nazi, or you're a, who knows what, you're racist, or you're a fucking, who knows, it happens all the time. It man. takes a long time sometimes, like, it doesn't, like, that whole, like, 
six mi- months in a relationship, you sort of sort of start seeing the real person. Yeah. But it takes a while where you're like, where you're like, oh fuck, you're insane. It's called the large Marge effect in science. Is it really? Remember in Pee Wee Herman? Yeah, that's what I. <laughs> that fucking thing comes out. Well, no, I mean for me, the I'm I, the solution to it is just to like, if you are beginning to hang out with a girl who you think's wonderful, the greatest gift, or a guy who you think's wonderful, the gift, the truly loving thing to do, is be yourself. Don't start writing weird shit to them in a kind of like trying to imitate old English or something, you know, like (laughs) don't do, don't write when don't fucking start writing like flowery fucking writing to them. If you don't write flowery writing, don't start fucking don't, don't like act like you don't play video games when you play video games. See, I think that's why I have such a short success rate with my, because I think when women meet me, at first it's like, oh, funny guy, and he's kind of this and that, and he's a little exciting, and he's got this weird life. And then, like, you know, but then I have a really fucking awful dark side, and I don't yeah. really hide it. So about two months in, they're like, oh, <laughs> you're not, I'm out. That is what you're like. You really are dark when the two months in. Or you were saying you... I mean in general, but I think, like, once they... But I don't hide it. I'm not, like... That's great. I'm not presenting my... Well, then you're, fu- then you're not... Then, then you're not a... But I know, but I mean, I think that's why girls take a fucking hike pretty quick because it's like it's fun at first and then they're like oh wait there's also an underbelly of this guy yeah and they don't usually and i don't blame them i get pretty dark okay what's the underbelly dwyer you just seem so sweet what what the, what's happening in the dark of the night over at the I chateau just... <laughs> at my uh, studio apartment in glendale <laughs> <laughs> that's right ladies studio apartment uh, glendale you know what i think your dark side is you're too fucking hard on yourself that's what i'm I, hard on myself I i'm working tell. on it i'm working on it you're hard on yourself man this is a sad thing it's like these fucking girls they probably love you man but you like you think you think it's bad because you live in a studio apartment there ain't nothing wrong with that i'm I sick like of these studio. fucking capitalist cocks <laughs> Suckers, <laughs> gauging the worth of a man by the size of his apartment. I have a dream that one day we will exist in a world where the size of a man's apartment is no more important <laughs> than the size of his penis. Wait, oh, I'm that sitting, doesn't work. I'm that's just average. I had a point I was gonna make. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't know. It would be great if people were just more upfront, like on the first date, yes. like. I tend to be gassy, and you know what? I get male yeast infections. I fart. I get male yeast infections. Have you ever had a male yeast infection? Nope. He can. I'm sure. I've had him twice. <laughs> it's you... awful. I, the first time I was like, oh, fuck, I got an STD. Like, I was like, shit. What? Tell me about it. What is a male yeast infection? Well, like, if you have sex with a woman, who's it, you can catch her yeast infection. And then what? Or if you... What uh, are the symptoms? 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 Uh, it gets real red and itchy. It's almost like... Tip uh, of the cock, whole cock. Shaft. Real shaft. The shaft gets... I had my... Sh- it was on my shaft. So what is it? Is it like... Is it like... What? Describe it. It's like... You ever... It's like... It's almost like you have... You ever have jock itch? Like you ever have a rash on your taint? No, jo- no, man. You I never had jock itch? I don't get these things. My my cock and my balls have been studied by scientists and artists because they're so beautiful. I've been known. I'm known. I'm known at LACMA. That's wow. I'm really happy for you. At, at LACMA, they call they 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 have one. I you've never seen the thing where they compared my penis to this Michael. That was your statue. penis. Yeah. I didn't know that was your penis. Yeah. I just couldn't. I didn't even read. There was a plaque on her. I couldn't take my eyes off your. Yeah, penis. I've got jock fucking itch. I got jock <laughs> itch. I, yeah, I've got it. I've had. I've had the fucking. I've had jock itch. I've had um, um, uh, when I was. Chlamydia. No, I've never had. I've never like, had an STD. I've never. Had I should have. Knock on wood. I never. I've never had an STD, but I've definitely had jock itch and um, um. My uh, my uh, balls atrophied and fell off. So now there's just a. It looks like my where my balls were now looks like a, a, a like a wet old wet end of a cigar. <laughs> I just did a spit take. <laughs> it looks like when a firework blows out. It's just kind of like just dangled charred. <laughs> what happened was I got so fucking horny that my 
balls blew up, and then it. Actually- wow, that's tragic. That's why you know that's you got to masturbate. What? Cinematic. Yeah, otherwise your balls get too full and they What's explode. What's masturbate? It is um, when you wrap your hand around your penis and you to go. Pee. Back- no, but just go back and forth with it. What? Yeah, use lotion too. That makes. What better. are you talking like a about? Hot, there's a uh, KY makes this uh, nice it, heated lube and it warms up. When so you, you're saying you like rub your dick until it ejaculates. What? It feels Does great. Does that work? Yeah, I think I about. Wish I'd known that for my balls blasted out. Man, this is uh, see. This is the, I blame the Catholic Church. How many times a week do you masturbate? Bro, easily at a minimum seven. <laughs> so that's th- a. It's usually one of my morning rituals. Do you? Do you do it? When do you do it? Before, or after your shower? Before I wake up, I walk my dog, I make coffee, check my email, maybe read some news, post a blog, whack it, <laughs> write for a while. I wash my hands because I don't want to get semen on my. I once I was at a friend's house and I was like, he took a shower and I was like poking at his computer. I was like, oh, I yeah. look, and then my fucking hands reeked of what I, I was like, oh man, and, you know, and I, I don't want to say who it was. But I was like, and it was like, it was ball sweat. I was going to say that. <laughs> it was like, I, it was like, I, I was like, I know what my, one of my good friends fucking sack sweaty, like morning sack smells like. I've never told him. And I know no. he, he was kind of fucking this broad at the never time. Tell fucking him. this broad. What am I in the Rat Pack? <laughs> it was fucking, <laughs> no, you could say what. Yeah. So, suddenly I'm a, an a, like one of those Jersey Dagos. Oh, dude. That's yeah, but so it's like, and then there, you know, it was there was this this woman that he was sleeping with at the time who I really didn't like. Ugh. So I'm like, I got I got a combo of uh, skank puss and my friend's Ugh. nutsack. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> and it kind of comes back and like I it's a it was fucking pungent. Ugh. It was rough. Oh man, that's fucking. Bad. You don't want to know. I wonder if I, if I ever f- do a show with him and I follow him. I rarely follow him though. He's too. He's he's too popular. You need to tell him what's up. Ah, it happens. Yeah, you're right. I mean, there's nothing. I mean, yeah, I guess it happens. But you gotta, guys, wash your fucking balls, man. Like, uh, you gotta do it. You gotta keep yourself. I guess clean. the last thing you think of somebody's gonna jump on your computer and smell your nutsack. You never know. It should be, yeah. That's a permanent memory, man. That's like... It's pretty... It's, a, it's in there. That's like shining a laser light in your friend's eye. It's like going to leave a permanent dot dot on your consciousness. That's like a deathbed memory. You're going to be dying on your fucking <laughs> deathbed. And remember and the think smell of, of that balls. guy's balls. That's not what you want in your deathbed. You don't want to think about that. You want to think about the smell of the beautiful flower that your wife gave to you on your... 50th anniversary. That's true. Chances are pretty good I won't have a 50th wedding. Chances are pretty good you will. I'm already pretty old. Yeah, no, no, no. Things are changing, brother. You don't understand the human lifespan is going to quadruple soon. We're on the verge of a lot of things, man. 100 years ago, we'd be near death. We'd be dead. We'd be dead. 100 years ago, we'd be dead. Yeah, we sure. Uh, Yeah, it's it's very strange what's happening. Our bodies are... I forget how old you are, but I mean, but we're kind of at the point where I'm nineteen. Your, you, God damn, you look terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it like that? There's a point where your body starts. It's like starts decomposing. Well, deter. I mean, like not deter. Like you're pretty much. No, see what happened was we don't really have a good basis for like how humans are supposed to look at our, at our age because. The only basis that we have is from a time where doctors were telling people that it was healthy to smoke, where oh, fuck yeah. there was no fucking uh, environmental protection laws the, the way we have, so the cars were just bursting out shitty gas. You see those pictures of old LA. It was like it's not like smog now. You can't even yeah. see like a block yeah. on the street. It's, it's just amazing. A mess. It was a mess. So people were did not know about proper nutrition back then. They were eating like really poorly so and also they were fucking um you know working too much they were working like in factories so you know we don't really know what age looks like we just know what it looks like when people are getting poor nutrition or people are like not living right in a lot of ways though i think that their food may have been like now we have so many hormones and i don't eat i try to avoid any meat with like grain fed you got to eat grain fed. Yeah, and hormones. It's like it, it, people seem to be getting cancer. Like I keep hearing of friends of friends who are like, oh, yeah, my friend 
Toby's got cancer. He's 25. And it's like, Oof. people shouldn't be getting cancer. It's all because well, it processed happens. food and all this. And sugar. I ate a fucking donut yesterday. And I never eat stuff like that. I felt like, afterwards, I felt like I drank cheap gut rock bourbon. Yeah. I felt like fucking shit. Anytime you get, you can't see, the, the, the problem is that Americans have in the past and still do to a terrifying degree trust corporations. And it's the dumbest it's amazing. The dumbest form of trust. It's like that. The, it's the silliest, craziest thing to trust a massive industry that's just trying. Corporations trust your government. Yeah, you, they'll take care. They'll of. take care of you. <laughs> trust your government. They'll totally take care of you. That's why cigarettes are illegal. It's like the 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 fallacy I think in people's minds when they think about it, like a pharmaceutical company, for example. The fallacy is they think that that pharmaceutical company is being run by a group of people who wake up in the morning and they're like, let us create healing medicines so that we can cure the sorrows of society. <laughs> that's not, that's not what, what's happening. What's happening is these motherfucking demons, they wake up in the morning, they go to the fucking, uh, go to work. They're like, all right, what are we, now tell me about this antidepressant again. It, 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 serious side effects if you stop using it, right? And they're like, yeah, serious side effects. Awesome. Okay. So we got it hooked in their brain now. So if they stop using the antidepressant, how long did you say? Two months where they're not going to be, have be able to stand up straight? Great. Two months of vertigo if they stop using this thing. Now, what do we name it? Then they come up with some sweet sounding name like <laughs> Libertina. <laughs> Uh, you know what I mean? They come up with some sweet sounding name for this fucking poison. And then they fucking, then they start doing this ad campaign where it shows like a mother walking in the park with her kid as though like, yes, now your family life will get better because you're on Libertina. But really all that happened is you let a pharmaceutical company put a fish hook in your brain. And now if you want to get that fish hook out of your brain, two months on the couch, bitch, two months on the fucking couch. That's the that, those are the types of minds that are running our society are running these corporations. It's the same with uh, McDonald's. It's the same with cigarette manufacturers. It's the same with like any, any most processed food manufacturers do not care about the fact that the shit that they're producing will statistically cause a certain percentage of the human population to die the most painful, agonizing deaths anyone can experience. And you know who else loves that? Those painful, agonizing deaths? The pharmaceutical companies, because they're the ones who get to sell the fucking cancer pills. They're the ones who get to sell the fucking narcotics to blot out the pain. So you have two, you know, whatever the food processing places are, meeting, having this awesome satanic synergy with the pharmaceutical companies. <laughs> we make the poison, you make the shit that sort of cures the poisoning. They love it. So the whole thing's awful. All you got to do is go to a fucking farmer's market or go to the goddamn um, store and pay an extra dollar for organic food. That's all you have to do. It's so fucking easy. I, I know somebody who was against organic food, too. Who? because it, eh, this, My fucking ex-girlfriend. Because she was like, well, if we don't do organic, we could make, grow more food and feed more people. And, and it's like, yeah, okay. What do you mean it could feed more people? I don't understand that. That organic food is taking up, it takes a slower process opposed to like uh, different kind of farming, which could be faster and rapid. So then more starving people could be fed. But you're under the assumption that somebody gives a shit about the starving people. Also, you're, I hate that fucking thing, man. There's nothing worse. Whenever you start talking to somebody about like, this, you know, living a better life or the idea that your life can be better. You could change your life and have a positive life. If you just like focus, inevitably they talk about some starving motherfucker. They're always like, yeah, but one amount the starving kid, <laughs> it always comes out. The starving kid in Africa is always used as a reason not to focus your will and visualize the kind of life you want to have. Cause what they say is a oh, starving kid in Africa can't visualize a better life. Blech. It's like, uh, maybe the fucking starving kid in Africa is an asshole. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he doesn't have focus. Maybe he doesn't have a good attention span. I don't fucking care about the starving. In other words, like if like if 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 I had some special, if you were drowning and I came next to you and you were drowning and I had some weird watercraft and I'm like, hey, get on this fucking watercraft, man. I think I can keep you from drowning. And you're like, well, that watercraft wouldn't work in Africa. <laughs> it wouldn't. It wouldn't. It wouldn't work in Africa. It's a whole different fucking place, and I'm sorry they're suffering over there. But it's like, 
so you're that fucking cunt is like don't eat organic food. it's hurting the starving people like organic food is what is her is making people starve all these organic farmers are just starving the world what does that even mean i wonder how much of the organic farming is uh corporate based finding because you see those pictures of people were posting of the ceo of uh urban outfitters and he's like yeah. this fucking disheveled dopey looking goon and he's it's like it. he's very 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 pro life and all these and people are like I can't believe it I'm like yeah. yeah the CEO of a major corporate like just because that company represents yeah. their clothing represents your ideology yes. and your trends they just saw a market that's yeah. all that is same, same. with whole foods they that's don't give it. a fuck that yeah. guy's also he was anti like all uh, healthy and it's like they don't give a shit yeah they saw a market and that that guy's making billions of dollars off of your pseudo liberal wannabe bullshit that's exactly right man that's and then what a wonderful fucking thing because you've uh, like the job like and urban outfitters close it blows anyway it's like you shouldn't be shopping there for a myriad of other reasons yeah 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 don't fucking shop there you don't want to fuck you don't want their shitty clothes man hey fucking i got i got my cbgb shirt though Ooh, i love it i love that club i love it. i saw some girl with a cbgb shirt last night i was like really really we're still doing that one Dude, I went into Urban Outfitters and I was having low blood sugar and I bought a fucking pair of the worst pants I've ever bought in my life. <laughs> I, still don't, I still don't know why they, I bought them. They were like sh- these shitty fucking black corduroys. And like I had low blood sugar and I went in that there. That shit makes me crazy. Me too, man. It fucked me up. There was no reason to buy it. I, like I remember coming home in this kind of weird haze and I looked in the bag. I'm like, what the fuck? You bought a pair of black baggy corduroys? Like from like eighties looking, dude. It's just it looks like. Why didn't you return them? For I don't know what else you could get. I'll there. tell you, why I didn't get a great coffee them. table. I didn't book. return them because <laughs> get a fucking uh, fake vintage camera, bro. That's such a weird place to me. That people... I could get a plastic uh, bowling pin duck. <laughs> weird fucking shit that it just you know that, that people want to put in their first dorm room. They just decorate dorm rooms. It's for babies who want to fucking rebel or something. Right, nobody takes that shit seriously. It's like if if you you have to the, the the if you have any whatever the thing is that you think is so special about you that you use whatever the like like fashion is a language. It's a, it's like a a way of when you know like the most overt example of it being people who wear jerseys. You know, I can never get on board with that. Well, I own one jersey and I'm. It's. I think the tag is still hanging on it. I'm too embarrassed to take. Like I'll never wear it. Well, well, I mean. What you're wearing now, it's its own form of jersey. I can look at what you're wearing True. now. If I'm a if I'm a corporate if I'm a corporate uh, uh, expert at this stuff, I I can look at what you're wearing, and I could probably tell you where you like to shop. I could probably tell you what books you've read. I could probably tell you they study this. They've paid Isn't people that amazing so much that's, money to study this. They did that. That's when like Nirvana and all that broke, and people were like, oh, yeah." They had been studying college radio trends for like they were like, oh, this is this music is on the rise. Yeah. So that's in the corporate record companies jumped on. It wasn't like this like fucking then they explode. It was like somebody went, oh, this is going to be big. Let's jump on this now. That's they knew it. it was coming because what it represents is they're these uh, um, societal vibrational frequencies that run through every culture and the closer you tune into that frequency the more you become the archetype of specific memes that come and go in society so like when you watch the country music awards what you see when you see the most famous country musicians and the reason they look so garish and idiotic in the clothes that they're wearing and the way they look is because what you're seeing is something that is tuned artificially tuned into this frequency to the point it's like a chameleon they're imitating this societal archetype so that you get like the handsome disheveled cowboy guy it looks like <laughs> you know you get that thing you get the you get the um you get the 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 kind of like the woman who looks like she should be like uh, standing in front of her plantation watching the sun rise over the fucking fields you get these like it's kind of amazing it's amazing because it's so a lot of it's so dis like dishonest not it's like purely dishonest. Dishonest. but i mean like it's not that's why you, there's like no guys like Johnny Cash because it's like oh he was a real honest fucking musician. It's the where hu- these guys are like presented, They're but presented. people buy into it. It's the human equivalent of um, the types of animals that can like make themselves look like a different type of animal. You know, like the like there's like um, um, 
moths that can make themselves look like they, the design on the back of the moth will uh, look dangerous or there's like animals that can make themselves seem much more dangerous than they are and it's a survival tactic it's really great like puffer fish they can like go yeah. and puff up and it's fucking hard to eat them and it freaks people out or not people it freaks out like sharks like <laughs> idiots but like but so these people have what so what happens is certain people they this is something charles manson actually said which I never really understood. I've heard him say some things that where I was like, yeah, okay, Kinda that makes, makes sense. Same with uh, Ted, uh, what's his name? Unabomber. Unabomber. You read his thing, you're, there's a lot of it where I was like, yeah, you're right, and then you ramble and And then you crazy. go into like t- five minutes of fucking inarticulate gibber, prison gibberish, but Manson said that uh, um, you know, the people here in prison, this is who they're imitating in Hollywood. They just can't handle these people. These are the real version of it. So when you see like a, you know, James Dean or when you see like a dangerous figure in, in or I guess the most the current version of the mo- of the dangerous darkling handsome person is Pat Robert Pattinson Pat, Pat I don't know who Pat. the fuck that is Twilight dude I don't watch so, I have I got vague idea isn't he like super handsome yeah he's super handsome but kind of looks dangerous but like kind of like so so it's it's he represents what james dean was it's like there's always going to be the the, that archetype the the archetype and 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 the so what happens is uh hollywood or advertisers or whatever they try to find the person who tunes the most into these archetypes that they've discovered and that's who they use as a symbol to represent their product so when you say i like this guy you're not just saying i like this guy you're saying i like this I like this type of entertainment or I like this type of me and I like this type of clothing and I like this type. It's all of a language that you use. It's a language that vapid, shallow people use to communicate. So when I look over and I see somebody wearing a CBGB shirt from Urban Outfitter, I'm going to have two responses. One, oh, fucking cool clothes, man. Like, I still like that. (laughs) Or two... I'm going to look at that guy and be like, what a fucking douche. You really wearing that fucking Urban Outfitter bullshit? Both are fucking shallow. Both are like basing um, basing who this person is on their True. clothing choice. Um, whereas, who knows? Maybe the fucking person underneath it is some kind of beautiful, brilliant poet, genius she, she musician. She was very pretty. You saw a hot girl in the CBGB show? Yeah, last night at the show I did. Very hot. Very hot. Yeah, that's true. We're you, very, sh- it's we're very, and it's like if you would have seen somebody like Bukowski or Harry Cruz in person, you would have been like, who, like, and not know who they were. Get you would have been away from me. It's disgusting. Yeah, they're like this, and then you know, and then when people, when like Bukowski got famous, and he started was able to sleep with really young, attractive women. It's yeah. it's like that's even more shallow. Not on his behalf. He's just reaping the fertile benefits. Well, they. I mean, it depends on why they're fucking him. Like, if they like his poetry, it's great. If they like it because he's famous, well, it's. I guess they're getting what they deserve, but you like <laughs> <laughs> they're getting fucked by. They're getting a mouth- fat, greasy man with yeah, boils. Yeah, they're getting mouth fucked by a goddamn guy who probably smells like a a, a, a vineyard that got hit by a meteor. Fucking that guy probably. I kind of question like, uh, and I think he even said it like, uh, I I question how much of his drunkenness was created. You know, like it, yeah. he, like he created an image, and he yeah. and he sort of sold that. I mean, I'm sure there was elements of it that were true, but he kind of even alludes to it in some things where he's, you know, like this is this is a character. Yeah, I've seen. I, he says it in the documentary. He's like, in my stories, I always win, and yeah. it's like you're saying. I mean, I think he said other things, but it's it's interesting because then I had a neighbor who was like, like a writer, and I'd hear like late at night, I'd hear his typewriter <laughs> ah. and i'd see him like outside you know and it was like yeah you can emulate em, 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 emulate other forms of writer yes so everyone globs onto that i'm gonna be drunk guy yep and it's like well that's uh you, why don't you go blow gore Vidal like kerouac did or <laughs> <laughs> run with the bulls oh yeah like do something so, else you want to do it fucking do it you want to do it go for it see this is the thing everybody wants to fucking everybody wants to sit around the side of the fucking swimming pool nobody wants to jump in or when i was looking at this fucking um uh exercise video with this giant fucking weightlifter dude there's like too gigantic but i i wanted to figure out if i was doing curls right because i like to work out (laughs) and this fucking guy said one of the most profound things that i think has been uttered by a human since the age of buddha he said he's like lifting these giant weights and he's like Everybody wants muscles, 
but nobody wants to lift the heavy weights. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's so true, dude. Everybody wants to be a fucking artist. Nobody wants to go crazy. Everybody wants to fucking come up with like the brilliant idea. Nobody wants to go into the waters where you got to fish for that shit. It's like wanting to catch some it's like wanting to catch a giant octopus and going fishing at the fucking fountains at, uh in Vegas. It's like you got to go into the fucking dangerous deep dark waters of the world if you want to fucking get the inspiration you're not going to get it from fucking wearing your goddamn cbgb shirt and typing into the typewriter you bought at the fucking thrift store while meanwhile you're like all you're doing is going around to bars and trying to fucking pick up pussy you know all you're doing is just skating on the very surface you gotta go nuts you gotta go fucking have you go nuts duncan I think that I have. <laughs> I have. I know I have. I've had some pretty dark fucking moments. I don't call it. I mean, I don't. Honestly, I don't think the word for it is like going crazy. I just think it's like you have to. There's certain thoughts. There's a series of thoughts that you have to start allowing yourself to have. That if you told people that you were having these thoughts, um, if you told certain people that you were having these thoughts, they would, they would, they would be like, "Well, you, you, you have lost your mind." Is what they would say to you. Meanwhile, these are the same people who are fucking um, deeply in debt to the banks, who are eating shitty processed food, and who are in miserable uh, relationships and marriages, and who um, uh, think it's okay for our country to drop bombs on people in other countries. You know what I mean? Who's fucking crazy? Who's crazy? You know, the people who run the party line, the fucking people are like, yeah, you know, from time to time we have to drop dr drones on children in Afghanistan. From time to time, we have to turn Afghani toddlers into hamburger meat. Or the person who's like, we should not ever be at war. We're being run by the prison industrial complex or the military industrial complex and the pharmaceutical companies and the prison industrial complex have created a satanic synergy between each other that is sucking the joy and the life out of our planet. You say that to certain people and I'm like, you fucking conspiracy theorist. What are you talking about? You fucking nut. What are you, a fucking Unabomber? <laughs> I've, I've been accused of being a communist and stuff for saying, and it's like, what? You're out of your fucking mind. The inmates are running the asylum, yeah, Duncan. Man. Yeah, but you, you, they are running the fucking asylum. I mean, the truth is, it's weird how people just, like, again, it goes back to that. People just trust. Like, people just assume, like, when people, I, I saw some guy, like, assuming a politician is going to be great. Like, somebody posted the other day, like, Ron Paul, sometimes he just makes too much sense. It's like, you're out of your fucking mind. <laughs> None of them. <laughs> Are gonna ever be in? They say it, and people go, "Yeah, fucking yeah. change." And it's like it's not gonna change. Well, no, it can change. It can, but I don't think it's gonna happen that way. It, no, it won't happen through them. It's not gonna happen through those old fucking goddamn uh, false prophets and uh, a greedy uh, people. And at the very best, they're just like uh, deluded. You know, the best of them are deluded. The worst of them are power hungry uh, enslavers who want to rise to power so their corporate friends can get pay cuts. And that's it. That's their main goal. But it's, but yeah, but, and, and that's the other thing is the fixation on the political system and the fixation on um, the meta is the very thing that's keeping it from changing. Because people are like, ah, I'm watching the fucking, look, guys, we know the elections don't change shit. We know that it's not going to change anything. We know that the wars will continue no matter who gets fucking elected because the way that they get elected is by going through a series of initiations that filters out uh, the, uh, the most honest and leaves the most cutthroat and morally bankrupt of them in the thrones of power all over the fucking world. That system's not going to work and you're not going to change that fucking system. It's like, it's like trying to stop a fucking rainstorm by fucking throwing like a uh, uh, by by pissing in the air. You're not gonna fucking do it. I don't. By the way, I don't, <laughs> if that is, I don't think I don't know what that even means. But my point is the the real thing that, that would change it is if everyone started eating better, exercising. And fucking focused on making their lives happy. If everyone started doing that or a huge majority of people put out the cigarettes, started fucking reading the important book, the, the right, the important books and started trying to evolve themselves and the people around them. My theory is that those fucking what would happen is the people who are parading around in the public eye and in the spotlight would begin to look more and more 
fucking this clown like and garish and freakish it's already kind of happening when you see fucking romney and his fucking six hundred dollar haircut lying to the world he looks like a freak so does fucking obama he seems fucking weird and cold and uh um hillary clinton she just looks like a fucking all of them just kind of look weird it's weird they show like uh, you see obama and like they'll show pictures of him like fist bumping somebody yeah. and it's like or like playing a practical joke on, and since they're like they always present him as like he's just he's just a guy he's just a guy. I and mean, it's like this is all calculated. Yes, this is they've spent fucking millions of dollars coming up with that one photo. Absolutely, dude. Absolutely, and that, of all the pictures, those are the ones that they picked. Like they picked the fist bump pick because they want to connect with the people. With the janitor. Yeah, it's like look, no matter what Obama's done, no matter what fucking Obama's done, and he's done some things that I love, but no matter what he's done. His administration just fucking raided Oaksterdam and Oakland, the How to Grow Marijuana University, was raided by the DEA um, and cops while simultaneously at some kind of Catholic college or some school, a gunman was going around shooting people. So the cops are down there busting farmers while meanwhile a lunatic is like going through a school shooting people. Makes sense. <laughs> it's so fucked the up. guy with the gun was fucking high on weed. Everybody knows it. Uh, that's right, brother. That guy wouldn't be going <laughs> shooting up people if he, he hadn't been, been that wacky the baggy. He would have been uh, if he would have just had a couple Miller High Lifes. That's right. Couple. And gotten a bar brawl like a good man's supposed there to. There you go. There you go. Back Get in, in the a day. bar brawl. Back in the day, back in the day when we didn't have access to marijuana, you didn't see any of these school shootings going down. You fucking couple of shots of Jim Beam and come, come, come in it, Columbine. There you go home now. and you fucking hit your wife that's and right. kids. Take it out on your kids, not on. on that's what he spent. Take it out on your kids. Nam yo ho renge kyo nam yo ho renge kyo nam yo ho renge kyo nam yo 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 ringe 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 Vietnam ringe kyo Well, you know what, Matt Dwyer? Yes, Duncan Trussell. You got to stop being so hard on yourself. I'm You're a stop today. Glowing light. You're a sweet, beautiful spirit. I'm gonna. You're eat. a great fucking person, man. You're so I fucking am. cool. How dare you lash yourself with a psychological flog? Why would you do that? Is it called a flog? A strop? Flog? Flog? Yeah. Is it a strop or a flog? Oh, you get flogged. Either way, take that shit off my baby's back. I don't want you stropping yourself no more. And you fucking, you got a studio apartment. Guess what? That fucking, do you have a studio apartment? Yeah, but it's pretty big. That it's fucking really studio nice. apartment in most other parts of the world would have an entire fucking family living in it. Like what? You're supposed to have a couple of bedrooms? See, if you're proud of your cave, suck my dick. It's like being proud of your fucking warren, your burrow, your nest. Oh, look at me fucking two bedrooms and look at my nine nine. <laughs> you fuck. You're just a goddamn weasel proud of the grass you pulled in to your stinky little nest. There's better things to be proud of. That's easy for you to say. You have a house in the Pacific Palisades. Yeah, but I'm proud. Of, <laughs> but I'm proud of my shoes. No, I, I um, I uh, by the guy, I don't. P.S. Have a house in the Pacific Palisades. That's a fucking joke. It's but, right on the border of the Pacific Palisades. I actually have a very nice apartment. I like it. You haven't been in there, have you? I've never been there. I'd like it's to see it. Very big. I don't. Uh, I don't need much. I'm at my desk in my bed watching movies or cooking. I love to cook, ladies. Very good. Beef. Oh, you are a great cook. <laughs> Made beef bourguignon recently. But here, by the way, think of it this way. Who would you rather fucking hang out with? You know what I mean? Would you rather hang out with a guy who's got some mansion, but whose yeah. who's fucking, fucking soul looks like ha- like chewed hamburger meat vomited out of the mouth of a child who just got run over by a roller coaster and it caused the child to projectile vomit the co- content of its stomach onto the tracks or would you rather hang out with somebody who's got a fucking studio apartment but whose heart whose heart is like some beautiful cosmic glowing thing that's who you want to hang out with you don't care about their fucking nest true it doesn't matter about your fucking nest my nest is, i got a comfy nest it's not your nest it's what's in your chest that matters oh, yeah, bro <laughs> you gotta get some you gotta get some shirts made <laughs> 
Put a bumper it. sticker. We are getting shirts made. What's going on? You going on the road soon? You got any fucking I'm going, dates? I don't know where I'm going. I'm going to San Diego. No, South Dakota. I don't know why I said San Diego. And Idaho, I think, with David Keckner. And then Memorial Day weekend, I'll be with David Keckner at the Laugh Factory in Chicago. Ooh, that's fucking cool. I'm you, excited because it's my hometown. Hey, Chicago people, you got to go see Matt Dwyer do stand-up comedy. He is so fucking funny and so fucking dark, and he crushes. You got to go see. Where's your? What's your um blog? Uh, you know, I can't. It's it's on. I always link it to my blogs to on my Twitter. It's on. Uh, so e-blog, I'll have it on my. It's uh, so super go, duper mental. Go to go to dunkatrussell dot com, and I'm gonna have a link to Dwyer's blog and um, to his show dates, so you can get some tickets to go see this beautiful man. God bless all of you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you. And remember. Nam yo ho renge kyo nam yo 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 renge kyo oh